Welcome back, programmers! In this new episode of the Pure Basic 101 series, I will talk about types, simple types, complex types, as well as custom types. We'll see them all. So let's get to it. Okay, so before jumping into the Pure Basic types, let's discuss about types in general. What are types used for? Well, types are used for two things. First, you can define how data is structured and stored in memory. And second, the compiler can do type checking at compile time, meaning it can detect typing errors. Okay, if you try to put a string into a number or a number into a string or an array into a structure, these kind of errors can be detected at compile time. So you don't have to wait for runtime to see a strange behavior or even a crash of your application. So now pure basic types in pure basic how do you define a type well it's pretty easy when you are defining a variable or a procedure you give them a type variable name dot type so you're using the dot sign here here the variable name as the type you can use the define keyword but it's it's the same you say define name dot type or you can use define dot type and the name it's the same way these three lines here will give the same result for procedures you just say procedure dot type and then the name of the procedure this tells the compiler that the return value of your procedures will be of this type and for parameters same way param name dot type param name dot type etc you can also use specific uh, keyword like array list and map and we'll see that later by default if you don't specify any type you can just say okay name like this length and the default type in pure basic is integer okay so length here is the same as length dot i i have divided pure basic types into three categories simple types complex types and custom types it is my own categories okay it's not official in pure basic it's how i'm defining them simple types are themselves divided into two subcategories i would say um, you can see the whole list of pure basic types simple types in the documentation but i, I copy the the table here so my two subcategories are numeric types they represent numbers and string types they represent text so here is the full list of numeric uh, simple types. Numeric simple types goes from uh, byte, which takes up one byte in memory, to quad or double or even integers on a 64-bit architecture, which takes up uh, eight bytes in memory. And depending on the uh, memory consumption, you have a different range of value of course on on one byte if you know a little bit of binary arithmetic on one byte you can have only the values from negative 128 to 127 etc up to quads where you have values from negative nine quintillions to positive nine quintillions and even numeric numeric uh, types are divided into integers and uh, floating point numbers so float and doubles are floating point numbers the, the rest is integers and we can use character and unicode here these two types are also used to define one character in a string so they can also be in the part of the string uh, simple type you have the list here and for strings so you have two types for strings just the regular string dot s or dollar we'll see that later and the dot s with curly brackets it's the fix fix length string so between the curly brackets you define the fix length for example dot s curly bracket 10 curly bracket will tell the compiler to always reserve 10 characters for this string even if you put a three character long string text like bob in a 10 uh, fixed length string it will take 
10 characters in memory and not only three. On a regular string, if you say my string equals Bob, three characters, it will take four in memory because you, you, you must have a special character at the end to tell, uh, to tell uh, the program that it's the end of the string, actually. Dollar sign, okay. So the dollar sign can be used instead of the dot s to, to define the type of a variable as a string. But the particularity is that the dollar sign is part of the variable name. Here, name dollar and name are not the same variable. Beside simple types, in pure basic, they, they are complex types. There are three complex types, arrays, lists, and maps. An array is an indexed set of elements of the same type. All those elements are contiguous in memory. You define an array using the dim keyword. dim myarray.s is going to be an array of string. All my elements are going to be strings. Here, I have four elements in my array, indexed from zero to three. The three here means the highest index. I access an uh, element of an array like this with a parenthesis. I can redimension an array using the redeem keyword. Here, my array is redimensioned to eight elements. You can pass an array to a procedure using the keyword array like this. And the number here in parenthesis is actually the number of dimensions of your array and not its size, okay? And speaking of dimensions, uh, yes, you can have multi-dimensions arrays in pure basic. How to define them? Dim keyword, your name, the type of each element, and here, separated with commas, you put all the dimension. So here you have a two-dimension array. You can pass multi-dimension arrays to a procedure. Same thing, same syntax. You use the array keyword, the name of your parameter, and between the parentheses, you put the number of dimensions. Here, two, so you can pass your my multi array to the process multi array procedure. It will work. If you use the redeem keyword on multi dimension array, it will redimension only the last dimension. It will resize only the second dimension here from three, so from four elements to nine elements. And in pure basic, you cannot change the number of dimensions of an array. You have to recreate one and copy the data, data yourself. Next is list. So what is a list? A list is a dynamic linked list of elements of the same type. The difference with an array is that the elements are not contiguous in memory. They can be anywhere in the memory, but they are linked together you can go from one element to the next or to the previous. That's how a linked list works. How do you define a list? You use the keyword new list with the type of the element here. New list.d is a list of doubles. And then you have functions in the list library. You can check them out to add an element, remove an element, move within the list, etc. Here I'm adding one element with the pi value because it's a double. You can pass a list to a procedure. Here you must use the list keyword, the param name, the parameter, the type of the element. Again, it's a list of doubles and, and voila. Uh, here, so you can call process list on my list. That will work. Final complex type is map. It's very similar to a list, but it is a dictionary or what we call a hash table indexed by a string. So once again, you can check the documentation on the map library. How do you define a map? You call new map keyword with the type of each element. Here it's a map of long and each long is indexed by a string. So how do you add an element? My map of L, L being my key, is equal to 50. So you're assigning the value 50 to the element for the key L.
you can pass once again a map to a procedure using the map keyword your parameter name the type of each element and so you can call here the process map on my map uh, map uh, this will work finally we have custom types so custom types here I'm just gonna talk about structures so a structure is a custom type made of fields you use the structure and end structure keywords with a name and you put a list of fields the field can be simple types complex types or other structures example here I'm creating a custom structure with two fields one field name and which is a string and one field name elements which is a list of integers and you see there is a difference in the way you are defining a field of a complex type or a field of a simple type I'm defining here a second structure custom2 with four fields one field called size which is a quad one field called comp which is a custom custom being this structure here okay one field called comps which is a map of custom and one field called numbers which is an array of doubles how do you define a structure a variable of type structure just like this c2 dot custom2 c2 is the name of my variable and custom2 is its type just like a normal simple type how do you access a field in a structure you use the backslash sign if you want to access the size field of the custom2 structure you just say c2 backslash size if you want to access the field of an inner structure here comp being a custom structure you say c2 backslash comp which takes you here backslash name which takes you to the name of your custom type you can combine uh, complex types simple types and uh, custom types in several ways but not any ways so you can have complex types made of simple types okay a list of integer a map of string you can have a complex type of custom type a list of structure a map of structure an array of structure you can have conversely custom types made of simple types complex type and other custom types so you hear what, what this means is you can have a structure made of uh, simple types integer string uh, list array or even other structures it just that what we saw here for the custom two and but what cannot you have you cannot have complex type of complex types meaning list of lists map of list list of map or map of map it is not possible in pure basic if you want to do that you need to create a structure with a field being a list okay or a map and then you can define a map or a list of this structure here are some examples of an array a list or a map of structures okay this is the end of this tutorial and you should know that I skipped intentionally two concepts that are very complex static arrays that you can put in structures or structure union uh, you can check out the documentation for that but I did not want to go too much into detail and that is it for pure basic types all right now you know everything you need to know about pure basic types so you can go and write some code but don't forget the big four thank you all for watching i will see you soon